basically I packed up my bag, I jumped on top of my motorcycle and I rode all the way from Italy to Germany. I crossed the Alps all by myself and I went there and I didn't know no one. I didn't know one person in that place which was the middle of nowhere really. Yes. <laughs> in Bavaria. That's Alessandra Fergola and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Hey guys, I'm your host, Cara Duffy, and in this episode, you get to meet a human that makes me smile every time we're in each other's company. Alessandra is an apparel designer and a creative who is diligently going after making her dream life come true. From moving abroad to taking career risks, including her own brand, to finally getting to live in the same city as her long distance love, she is determined to make her dreams become reality. Before we jump into this episode, I want to speak to all of you who right now are Googling how to make a career change or how to start your own business or how to avoid going back to my old job. I am here for you. That is why I built my Thrive membership and my other courses and programs. I really mean it when I say I'm here to help you achieve your dream life. Visit caraduffy.com and book a free call today or skip directly to learn.caraduffy.com and check out thrive and all the other unique programs that are available. Let's create a custom plan that will actually work for unique you and your unique dream life. You're up to so many cool things and just have such an extraordinary story that I'm really excited for everyone to get to know you and hear it. (laughs) Uh, Well, let's just tell everybody your name, uh, where you are in the world and what you're up to today. So my name is Alessandra uh, and I live in London currently, but I'm Italian. And uh, I've been, I moved to London uh, now five, six years ago and I work for a sportswear company a licensed business, one of the biggest one in Europe, and we, uh, yeah, we we license different uh, sportswear heritage brands uh, such as Fila, Sergio Tacchini, and I, um, Russell Athletic, and I'm the head of design there. So just a few things, just a little bit fancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm excited to be uh, part of this uh, podcast, and uh, I, you know, it's been a quite a journey to be here because obviously uh, coming from Italy, you know, my dream was always to live in London because when I was a teenager, I always wanted to, you know, uh, listening to British brand, British band. Uh, I was, uh, you know, following British fashion, and was a dream of mine to live here. So, uh, you know, I, that was the only thing I wanted to do and be here. But obviously the journey to arrive here and to be settled here, it wasn't as easy and not as straightforward. It's not just that one day I picked up uh, my luggage and say, OK, I moved to London and I come here and, you know, I do, um, you know, whatever job. I just decided I wanted to be here, but I wanted to be here, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to I wanted to be in London as a part of my career journey. So I didn't want just to pack my bag and come here for, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever reason. I wanted to be, you know, um, you know, a proper move. So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it has been also a lot of back and forth because obviously I came to London in the first place and then I, uh, you know, I had to move back because of my job. And, uh, uh, yeah, and then I, you know, I wasn't happy, so I decided to come back again. Mm-hmm. So uh, my journey started uh, obviously in Italy, and I think like um, the best, uh, you know, I lived in Italy for 25 years of my life. And again, as I said, I wanted to live in London, but mainly I wanted to explore the world and live abroad. So the, the main thing that for me that set me free to do that was to learn English, because obviously I wasn't. You know, I wasn't able to speak English until I was uh, 25 years old, which is quite insane for some people when they hear me talking. They're like, oh, my God, you only, you know, like you always think when you speak in English that, uh, you know, that you mm-hmm. speak in English and you always spoke English. But actually, you know, when I was uh, like a, a teenager and I was li- listening to uh, songs in English, I couldn't understand the word. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I knew me, Mike, in the, you know, the sound. 
And, you know, it was, uh, you know, for me, the, I started on my first job. I worked for um, a motorcycle, a parry company. So I was actually employed there as a product developer for the motorcycle racing year. And I didn't know one word of English. I, I still don't know how they <laughs> hired me because the full company was an American company only speaking in English. And my, my boss was like um, Canadian uh japanese canadian so they hired me and i i had to learn so i learned by working and you know i was and that was the thing that set me free really because mm -hmm. after i learned to speak english uh i would i was like okay you know I, I am you know i'm set free and i can go and and do everything i want it's just really for me um learning english was like pure freedom yeah. Because I could apply for any job, I could go anywhere in the world, and there was no boundaries for me anymore. And so I worked there um, for a couple of years, and then uh, I, yeah, I got this call, phone call from a um, big uh, sportswear company in Germany. And one also of my dream was also to work in Germany because I didn't study English at school. Uh, but actually I studied German and when I was at school and my mom sent me to this German class, I was like, oh, wow, what a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I should really like, why didn't you send me to an English class instead of uh, a German one? And she was like, oh, don't worry, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be useful for you in the future. And then here I am, uh, I applied for this job uh, uh, in Germany and I got the job. So I moved there and I was there 28 years old. And when I moved there, um, I actually, uh, by the time I got the job, uh, I also got sued for my, from my current co company for uh, infringement of the non-compete agreement. Mm -hmm. So basically they, they didn't pay me uh, the money they owed me, like the last month of salary and my payoff money. So basically, I had zero money in my bank account <laughs> and I had to start my new job in Germany where I had to go there myself. So, uh, yeah, basically, I packed up my bag. I, by back then, I used to be a motorcycle rider. So I, I jumped on top of my motorcycle, a beautiful uh, Triumph Bonneville, <laughs> and I rode all the way from Italy to Germany. I crossed the Alps all by myself and I went there and I didn't know no one. I didn't know one person in that place, which was like a village lost in the middle of nowhere, really. Yes. <laughs> in Bavaria, like a completely different experience. And there was one, for me, one of the most beautiful gifts that life gave me because is um, you know, I just had met the most beautiful people. Mm -hmm. That's where we met. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, yeah, I just had an amazing experience uh, because I was far from my family and far from all my friends. Mm -hmm. You had to make them your own family and your own friend and make yourself a home. Yeah. Um, so obviously everything was, uh, you know, was a challenge. Uh, from a you know life point of view but and also work point of view everything it wasn't so easy um you know the the journey and to be there but uh it was really like yeah just amazing like all the people i met i met people that now live everywhere in the world it was just such a, a multinational environment that it was like a an experience that I will never forget and I will be thankful for uh, all my life. And despite the fact that I got sued by my previous company to go there, I'm still will do it again. Yes. I will never, <laughs> I will never, you know, I will never care much about the money I lost or whatever happened to that. It's just like I would not, I have no regret. Mm -hmm. really. Well, you also um, met your partner. Yeah, Which, exactly. So and in English gave you access to work and love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was very lucky because while I was there, I met uh, yeah my current my husband <laughs> there. 
But again, it wasn't easy, like the journey to be together here in London now, because we had obviously a lot of back and forth uh, between us. Uh, so when, um, when uh, as, after we got together there, uh, he got offered a job in Italy and he moved to Italy for five years while I got offered a job in London. So from the same company, uh, finally, my dream was there. And I was like, yes. oh my God, like, I can't say no. So obviously he was off, he left and he went to Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I, I can't not, not say no. So I got offered a much uh, more interesting job to work in, working for as apparel designer for the collaboration mm -hmm. for Puma. Uh, select, which was one of the, you know, the, the coolest department in the company, especially working in London with all the cool kids and, <laughs> you know, all, like uh, uh, all the people that, uh, you know, all uh, collaborators I, you know, I was always uh, looking at in terms of like uh, influencing lifestyle music and, you know, everything. So it was actually my dream job. So I was like, okay, I'm going no matter what. So uh, I packed my bag again after, uh, yeah, I've been in Germany for five years. So I packed my bag again and moved to London. But again, only three months in, in the job which I loved and I enjoyed, and it was really, to me again, uh, the most uh, exciting time to be at the brand. Um, basically, the, the company decided to shut uh, the London office so uh, that was really, I think, was one wasn't. I can still now remember the day where they decided to shut their office because while for other people uh, it was just like, oh yeah, you know, everyone was like, uh, oh yeah, don't worry, you're gonna find another job, or you know, that's not such a big deal. It's just a job. It's just an office. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, I've been dreaming my whole life <laughs> to be here. That was all I dreamed of, like, mm -hmm. since I was, like, 15 years old. And now you're just, like, in 20 minutes, you're telling me that everything is done. And it was, yeah, it was quite shocking. So I was quite distraught by the news. But then I was like, okay, I'm not going to, because I could, they offered me a job back in Germany. But I was like, no, <laughs> I can't go back, obviously, because for me it was, like moving back mm -hmm. uh you know in a way it was like moving back in life and i was like i don't want to i only want to move forward so i i say i was really difficult moment i didn't accept the offer and uh, and i decided i was like okay i'm gonna give it a go and i'm gonna move back to italy to see if uh, you know if i can find a job there eventually with my I have a lot of experience. I can speak very good English. Uh, eventually, I will be useful for some of the company there and someone will hire me. And uh, yes, so I was, you know, I was very, you know, I was excited to go back home, obviously, to be close to my family, to be with my, with Pete, with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, again, it wasn't as easy as I thought because you always think like, oh, I come back to my home country with a lot of experience and then everyone is like, yeah, <laughs> not really. <laughs> they were not really waiting for me. Um, to be there but uh, I had to you know also I think I made a, a mistake thinking that you know I would move there and I was really like no I just I want a job I kind of wanted to replicate the life I had in London back in Italy but there was no you know it wasn't really working in the sense that the, the country doesn't work like that um, so I tried to find a job, uh, I struggled, like I've done, I don't know, I think like 100 interviews, uh, and it was really, really hard to get a lot of rejection, especially after coming from such a cool, cool job, after, after such a cool environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I wasn't getting anything. I wasn't getting anything good. I wasn't getting any job. So I was getting a bit, uh, you know, distressed. So I was like, I'm not going to give up. Because every, every, everything I was doing, like every interview, every, every step forward I was doing, I was getting stronger and more self-confident as well. Uh, I was getting, uh, you know, like, I was like, okay, can't, like, I need to get there. I need to get there. I need to, you know, get work and I need to, you know, I need to go back to London again. So I, 
I packed again my bag and I told my husband, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move back to London and start freelancing there. So um, I went there. Um, I opened my consultancy studio uh, in London. And I started freelancing for a couple of brands. Uh, not very famous, but still good for me to, you know, get some money to survive here on my own. And uh, still, I was working in the fashion, um, more in the fashion side of the business. So I was working for a, bo- uh, a small brand where we were doing catwalk. And uh, so it was quite interesting. Also, something very different from what I've been working before. So mm-hmm. it was actually a new experience for me, which, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was very good and interesting. Um, and then I started building a lot of uh, clients and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people asking me for work. So at the end of the day, I was basically, I had so much to do that I had to hire people. <laughs> hire people to help me because I couldn't do everything on my own. And I didn't say no to anything. So I was like, I was working for many different brands and, um, yeah, and that's how I started working for Fila as well and for the company I actually uh, currently had a design of. And uh, they approached me for some freelance job at the beginning. And then uh, after a while, they offered me a permanent position uh, to head their department. So in the end, I got there. And yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was a journey, but it's been really, yeah, really exciting. And, and when did Pete move to London? Because I'm sure everyone listening is like, you left Pete in Italy, then what happened? Oh, yes. So basically, <laughs> oh, there was also like a funny story. So basically, he was in the meantime, he was in Italy. And he also got uh, like, when I moved back to London, he was like, oh, I really kind of want to move back. And there was still the time where I was still, you know, looking for client and potentially looking for a permanent job. So uh, we got to know to a friend that they were looking for a, a design manager uh, in Umira Cat, which is like a, a, a yeah a famous also American um, apparel and headwear company, and so I uh, I told him oh, to apply, and he applied for the role, and then after a bit I got also contacted by a, um, a recruiter about his job, so I said hmm, okay I'm gonna apply as well. <laughs> I applied for this job and the I didn't hear back from the from the company from the recruiter. So he then he applied as well because I was like, look, no one is actually no one contacted me, so why don't you apply? So he applied for the job. And then suddenly we both got a phone call back saying, Oh, uh, you have been chosen for the five finalists uh, for the five <laughs> for the last five uh, yeah, five um people for the job and I was like oh wow and you know I wasn't want to tell P and he didn't want to tell me and then we called and he was like "Uh, by the way I go you know I go into the final five and he was like oh me too okay so we both went for the for the interview again because it was like a three or four stage interview so we went for the the second stage of interview and same story uh we, we went for the interview we got a phone call both me and him, and, he, and they were like, oh, you got down to the final two. <laughs> <laughs> so it was basically me and him competing for the same job. And yeah, and in the end, uh, uh, we went for the final interview and he called me and he said, look, I've got the job. And I was like, okay, I knew, but no matter what, whatever, whoever will have got it would have been still a success. So we yeah. were happy anyhow. But it was good because then he, you know, he could move back to London and, you know, we could set our life here and we could, we then were able to buy a house and, you know, to start our life together. We got married. So there was, you know, there was in the end, like, it was meant to be, you know, like when it's like, you, you, you know, you always think like, uh, you never know, you're always wondering and then life always gives you what, what is meant to be actually all the time. Well, I love that that's one of the hazards, right, of, of having your partner do the same work that you do. Yeah, exactly. It's very, it's very kind of convenient, I, I guess, because in a way you feel like if you ever want to move or if you want to take a new challenge, actually, 
it seems to be easier kind of juggling because you feel like especially if you go and work for a big company you feel like okay there is for sure gonna be you know a space for you or for me as well it's not yes. as always given but you you will think so you think that you know positive and you're like yeah you know it's easier in a way and also you know you 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 share the same struggle and the, sh- the same happiness and you know you share ideas it's uh, it's a very beautiful thing I think yeah well and, and you also um you have all the things right you understand each other's business and what you're doing you can relate to each other you have like you said opportunities to travel the world together because of it I also love that you made an accidental business during that time yes uh, <laughs> yes we did um, yeah because um basically while while i was struggling i was in italy and we were um you know obviously i was looking for a job and this job wasn't coming so people was like look we need to let's make your job let's start the brand because there was always a passion of us to have it done and the thing to make it together was you know possibly the most beautiful thing we we could do so uh, we decided to start a brand. It was called Home of Home. It was a menswear brand. It was more like um, uh, always obviously influenced by sportswear because this is where both me and him are uh, coming from. Um, but with more like tailoring pieces. So it was more like, let's say, a smart casual kind of dress. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we started uh, in Milan and again there, we started in our living room with nothing. Like we just like some fabric and you know, some drawing. And then we suddenly decided to, you know, um, we, we did all the clothes and we're like, what are we going to do with that? So we were like, okay, let's, uh, let's apply and let's see if white, which is like a big trade show in Milan is going to host us. So he's going to have us there. And yeah. And we apply and suddenly we go in. So we were <laughs> like, oh, I mean, that's amazing. So we, you know, the fact that you can be part of like such a big event with another, like all, like so many brands that you have been always looking after. Puma was there as well. And, you know, other uh, brand that you, you know, you always uh, want to be beside. It's not that we were there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really good. We got a lot of interest. So we kept going for, um, you know, for a couple of seasons. And uh, until we decided that we wanted to expand. So just not be a brand based in Milan, but we wanted to be more like considered more like international brand. So we decided to also come to London. So we did the uh, um, London Fashion Week Man uh, here, uh, two or three seasons. And then we also went to show in Bean Caption in Paris. Mm-hmm. And that was also really good because uh, apart from, you know, the connection that, uh, you know, you do or the business you can have the amazing things like all the people you meet there like because you spend all this time in a trade show and you're just like looking for people to come and see your stuff and then in the meantime you have plenty of time to chat with your neighbor or with the other person at the stand with the guy at the coffee shop so in the end like we made so many friends uh, like by being there that was really like it was amazing like still like friends who then came to our wedding and it was us you know expressing ourselves together in a combined effort to create something beautiful so it was really like it was really a you know a beautiful time and experiences that we shared uh, but then once we all moved back to London, we did one more season and then we decided to stop it because it was just taking too much time and we, we, need, we wanted to focus on our full-time job. So yeah. we decided to take a break. <laughs> how, how has all the changes with Brexit impacted you being in London? Oh God, good question. Uh, very much. Uh, in the sense that uh, very much, but again, positively, because I became a British citizen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, it was it was very stressful. I think the day um, the day that uh, I, I, I woke up and I read in the news that uh, actually uh, the UK left Europe, I was strong. I, I, w- I couldn't believe I was actually literally crying because for me, the day that Europe uh, got together, it was, again, one of the most beautiful things that could happen to us. Because I remember before Europe, 
like, uh, you know, I used to go travel, you know, from Italy and you had, we had the Lira and then we had to go to France and we had the, uh, uh, French. the French, mm-hmm. um, money. And then you have to go to them, uh, to Germany and the Mark. And, you know, it was all messy. And I remember uh, when Europe came along, uh, I was living in Belgium at the time. I was studying there and actually it was, everything was easy. Suddenly just paying in euro. And it was just like the beautiful thing of being a joint uh, country is just such a beautiful concept. So for me, um, yeah, the day the Brexit came, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe that, you know, actually happened. And it was like a long uh, journey because obviously that happened in June 2016 and only this year, in the uh, 1st of January 2021. So five years later, we are actually left the European Union. So until then, everything was all like, we knew we were about to leave, but it was almost like the same. Mm-hmm. But it's actually from the 1st of January that things kicked in. Yeah. And we are facing a lot of uh, problems. I mean, me personally, obviously, as a European citizen, I had to apply for a, a pre settled status or settled status. That this means that uh, you can only stay, if you leave the country for more than six months, you can only stay abroad for up to three years or something like that, uh, before losing all your rights as a British citizen, mm. which is really bad. But, it, you know, I apply the same for British abroad. So it's yeah. really bad because I was like, all the effort I've done, you know, I've been here for like six, seven years, and now suddenly if I leave, then all I've, all my effort, all what I build up is suddenly gone. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really, yeah. Mm, you kind of feel like you you have been taken away of your freedom which is something I don't like so I have yeah so I have applied for the British citizenship Mm -hmm. uh, last year and I was a quite um yeah quite again quite challenging uh, process because there is a lot of tests you need to do like uh, you need to study uh, the English um, culture and history and you need to do a test about it, which is very complicated. It's actually a lot of questions the British people wouldn't know, even know. <laughs> because I was doing it with my husband. He was like, I have no idea. I was more like, I was like oh, this is, you know, I was more prepared than him. And, and then you need to do an English test and then you need to have, bring like an endless paperwork. And uh, yeah, so I decided to, yeah, to become a British citizen, which I only got the citizenship uh, this year in June which I'm really, really proud of. And also lucky because uh, with Italian, you can have double passport. No yeah. all countries allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's very good. So in terms of these, I'm, you know, I've got full freedom now to move and to do you know, whatever I want in case I want to leave the country. But in terms of um, you know, daily, let's say, um, business or daily life, obviously all the shipments, for instance, also we have uh, in and out from the UK, uh, they are massively impact, and not mm-hmm. only from time, but also for cost. Yeah. So our company is open um, a warehouse in Germany in order that all the shipment that, you know, needs to go to Europe, but they go there and they don't come to the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shipment became, yeah, massively expensive, but not only, you know, cargo shipment, uh, so whatever is coming for business, but also your personal stuff. Yeah. You know, I try to, I send two parcels to my family in June. They are still not arrived. No. Yeah, after like over a month. Like, because obviously now you have to do a lot of custom declaration. Uh, it's like same as you would send to overseas, like to US yes. or to China, which I don't know, like if most of the people, you know, I even know what to do because we do it for work. So for me, right. it's quite easy, but I don't know for other people. And then, yeah, traveling. I mean, we haven't been able to travel quite a lot, but obviously you can't go anymore into the, you know, into the European lane, which is going to be quite a shock the day I'm going to do it. Uh-huh. And they are talking about putting a fee like the ESTA in the US. Yeah. So it's like it's going to be a seven pound uh, uh, fine. No fine. It's like a sort of a visa that yeah. you need to pay. Uh, same, same as the one for the US that you have to pay before traveling to Europe. Uh, and then obviously like... On, it's horrible because no one like is um, you know is in a way wants to move here anymore. No, no, they don't want to. They can't. So, for for instance, I know for sure that 
the university uh, has had uh, been has seen a dropping of subscription of 50% uh, by Europeans. So it's really bad because obviously now, um, you know, not only for the university themselves, but for the general like, culture of the city. Yeah. Because London especially has been always known to be a very multicultural and that's why I wanted to be here. You know, I yeah. wanted to be here to embrace different culture, like all these mix and match of people, of, uh, you yeah. know, uh, the diversity. And now basically there is only either um, uh, like you, you British uh, students apply for university or uh, eventually more Asian or American because for them didn't really change much from before. You know, they mm-hmm. have the same sort of uh, legal requirement. But mm-hmm. it's very sad. I think it's very sad for, uh, you know, for younger generation. We, we have been impacted also, you know, I believe people who, you know, who own house abroad, uh, a massive tax. Uh, has been imposed and you know like I say I'm sad for younger generation because younger generation are not going to be able to you know to travel to be here and to you know to how do you say to uh, contribute to this uh, multicultural environment and same the people the British people British young uh, young talent they won't be able to go and move as freely as we did in you know yeah during our time and I find it very, very, very sad. Very mm-hmm. sad that, you know, people don't have the same opportunity that I had because as I said before, for me, the fact to be able to move freely in Europe and then come to the UK, it was the best thing that happened to me in life. And, you know, it, it's sad that people can't do this anymore. Well, especially with the UK being the only place that where English is spoken otherwise, yeah. right? And so it's it's there's so many things that we don't think about just from a language perspective of what you have access to or what you can do. Because if you go to France, you're speaking French. It, yeah. And of course, you may be speaking English in an expat multicultural community, but everything else is French. Everything else is German or, or you fill in the blank, right? So to have this place where the world language is being spoken and you're seeing different things. Plus the UK has the, you know, entire Asian uh, community. It has the American community. It has uh, the entire West Indies and Jamaican community. Like there's so many things that are so unique to London in particular. Um, It surprised me. I mean, even everyone here is a bit surprised by it because I feel like it hurts the UK more than everyone realizes. If Mm -hmm. anything, Europe is benefiting, benefit about this, like Ireland, for example, yeah. is uh, benefiting uh, yeah. quite a lot by, you know, by this, because obviously, mm-hmm. as you say, there you speak English. So yeah. a lot of companies move to Ireland and mm-hmm. open up there and to the Netherlands, because yeah. obviously Netherlands is not, you know, English is not the, the language, but they, everyone speaks English there and the main language is English. So. Yeah, like you say, it's, yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's sad because no, um, you know, mm, the, there is gonna be like less people wanting to travel here and less people wanting to live here and less people contributing to you know to our beautiful city, which is beautiful because it's made by all this culture and this mm-hmm. you know all these people and you know the crossing. Uh, between cultures and people. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to know, speaking of power and collaboration, you know, who have been powerful ladies in your life and how have women impacted you and your journey? Oh, so um, I think um, in um, women in general, always I can power me because I always think like, uh, I always want to be, uh, I, I always, always wanted to be a powerful lady as well. <laughs> In general, I want to empower people myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially, um, I wanted to, um, you know, uh, be, um, you know, uh, how do you say? Uh, yeah, I wanted to, yeah, to empower people myself. Instead of uh, powerful ladies in my life, uh, I think uh, in um, in my career, 
uh, one uh, person that uh, really influenced me was one. Um, uh, she wasn't. She was a colleague of mine. She wasn't like my boss or anything. She was the head of the pattern department, and she was really like really amazing. She she knew like she was what. I, when, when I was looking at her, the fact that she was so dynamic, multitasking, and she always had an answer, she never was pressed, she was managing to juggle so many things at once. I was, um, you know, I was always so amazed by her that for me, I was really like, I want to be like you. Mm-hmm. When I'm um, 10 years in, I want to be like you. I just want to be like like her, like she was so empowering and she had a big team and she had like so many, um, you know, so many people to look after and she was always so kind and she always had an answer for everyone. So, yeah, I think uh, I really looked up at her and I was like, okay, I really, I really want to be like you in 10 years time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and obviously I hope that now I am able to inspire new talent and new you know, people, they come in my office and, you know, I hope that they look at me and they think, oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I, you know, you, you know, I, yeah, I hope they say, well, I say to her 10 years ago and say, oh, I want to be like you. (laughs) What what does it mean? What does it mean to you to be powerful and to be a lady separately and those words combined? what What does it mean to you? Uh, for me to be powerful mainly needs to be means to be uh, to never give up really like to uh, to adapt so to never give up to whatever problem or whatever challenge you have in life to always find a way to to make it or to you know to find a solution yeah. but also as well to be very very positive mainly because I think positivity is something that we really need to be powerful as well, because there is no powerful with negativity, and, you know. Um, and as well, I think uh, power solely means uh, being um, able to adapt to changes. I think to adapt, and I think the pandemic really showed us this. Um, I think, yeah, to adapt, to be true to yourself and to who you are and who you, you want to be, sorry, true to yourself, to who you are and to you represent, but adapt to changes and to situation in order to, you know, uh, succeed or in order to overcome a challenge. Mm-hmm. And yeah. which, you've, which you've done so often in your life. I mean, you, you're such a great example of knowing what you want and maybe not knowing how you're going to get there, but you're going to keep going like, okay, maybe this way, maybe this way. Let's yeah. try this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I tried so, um, you know, so I never, like, I never, never give up. But in every challenge, even when I couldn't get a job, I always try many difficult, many different things I tried to do, um, you know, apply for a million jobs, do freelance, and then uh, do other things that maybe not really, um, you know, uh, related to my my job, but it doesn't matter. Like, I will never say no. That's my, my philosophy. Never say no. Any opportunity comes to you, just always go for it because you never know. There is always something good, there's something positive to get out of it. And, yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, it's really... Yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah, I think it's very, it's very um, interesting how, you know, things then develop and, you know, how your life goes. And um, yeah, but the main thing for me is like really not to, not to forget, forget who you are and, you know, try to be true to yourself and, you know, and adapt and move and challenge. Were you born that way or is that something that you learned? Mm, I don't know. I think I, I, I think I was born that way. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, I was, I kind of, I kind of a stubborn person, and I kind of want to. I always want to achieve something, and you know, be, um, you know, not achieve, but you know, I want to get what kind of what I want. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you have if you know what you want, then somehow you're going to get that. 
it's not always going to be the way you think it's going to be and the way you may be predicted, but it's going to happen. And that's what I think it's a good, you know, lesson in life. And yeah. I love it. Um, so it sounds like everything in your life works out because you make it work out. So where where are the areas where you feel like you're working on or taking on or where, where are the areas that you're looking to improve? Um, in, uh, in my uh, work, I feel like we, um, I would like to, you know, I think we have obviously we had a quite challenging year and uh, I feel like we are now looking at the future and um, we need to be positive about that. And I think in terms to do that, we need to improve the quality of our product and I think what we put in the market, because I think that uh, at the moment, um, uh, you know, we need, I think that the, um, we need to engage the consumer with, um, you know, a more a quality versus quantity, I think, yeah. in terms of products. I think we need to, you know, focus on uh, on a good product, focus on uh, sustainability, and focus on uh, um, on uh, you know on 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 products that are produced locally and uh, you know they are like good quality product. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I think that's where is the challenge is at the moment uh, from a work perspective because obviously um, it has all been. Um, very difficult for the past um, year and a half. And I think now that we are looking at the future, I think that's where we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you're not working, what are you doing for fun? What is, uh, what is not work? Like? I do. So depends. <laughs> so this winter, uh, when it was cold and we couldn't leave the house, uh, I picked, uh, picked up ceramic. Mm -hmm. So I started doing a lot of uh, nice pots with face that they remind me of my family. So I've got all the, my, a lot of pots with a lot of faces that everyone is a member of my family. And just because I miss them so much during, uh, you know, during lockdown. So I thought mm, I will make them here and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, they can be with me. And now, which is summertime, I pick up uh, roller skating. Very which cool. is really really fun and i love it and uh yeah i i was following some um uh woman in uh, some girl in instagram and and then i subscribed myself to a class and i started picking up class and then i started you know knowing people and getting group and then going skate uh, roller skating with them is uh, like a good activity that again uh, sets you free in a way like when you are there you're just like oh I'm just so free and happy I just don't have to think about anything I just need to go along skate and here there is in London so many cool spots where you can go and skate like um, I go either to the stadium to the Arsenal stadium or to Hyde Park which is like a super famous spot for roller skaters so it's quite good there is a nice a uh, bunch of people over there they you know if you don't know what to do they, they mm -hmm. teach you they tell you then they all dance together and then they do like they all um you know roller skate together and it's, yeah it's really 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 good fun that's very cool because there's so many people who want to try something new or they want to move to a new city or even abroad and they get nervous of like am i going to meet people is it going to be okay are they going to mm -hmm. accept me you know how what has your experience been and does it does it occur to you as easy to um, find friends and figure things out how, what would you tell someone i just say i would say not stress i just would say throw yourself at it and actually embrace and try to do try to do everything that comes at you it's like if you're running and stuff comes to you, you just need to take them like almost like a no, pac -Man. Yep. <laughs> you, know, like you, just, uh, yep. you just need to, uh, whatever it comes, and that's the best way of doing because then it's almost like a training, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, I think when you move abroad, because I've done it so many times, it's like you get trained more yes. and more or more often you do it, and I, I guess you know it as well. It's like uh, the first time you're a bit nervous, but then when you know the gimmick, which is just like, just go, be open and meet people. And if people invite you, just say yes. Don't say no to anything. Just say yes. 
that's what I've been like for yeah. my past 10 years. Always say yes to everything because then that's where you actually uh, meet the greatest people, you do the greatest things and you do things that you will have never done in your life. Yeah. So it's actually, I think that's the, the best attitude to just don't stress and just uh, be open and and just do things that you you know even if you feel a bit awkward just go with it and just and just don't don't worry no one is gonna is there to judge you in a way you know we are you know we are all adults and you know we're just there to embrace life and to be together you know and eventually to meet new friends especially in the time we are now we have been so apart from each other then I feel like right now people just want to be together and just you know make friends make family have a laugh and you know be together and you know meet new people Mm -hmm. it's so important we're not we're not meant to do life or business by ourselves right so we have to find the people and yeah you can find your people everywhere it might take more effort in some places versus others but yeah I agree with you. Like saying yes changes things. And I also think the more you say yes, the more the universe knows, oh, you want to play. Okay. Yeah, let's exactly. Play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think, yeah, I think so too. And that's why I think as well, like uh, being locked down was so hard, like especially for me from, you know, from a social perspective, but also from a work perspective, because I love, you know, I love to be in our office with people, you know, like I love to socialize. I love to, you know, chat and, you know, be surrounded by people and, you know, to be at home. I think that was for me uh, the main challenge, really, Mm -hmm. because I really wanted to, you know, be, you know, I love to socialize. I love the office life. (laughs) It's just like, uh, it's, it's just fulfill me completely, you know, to to be there and, you know, to, to chat about everything, but just be there and share, uh, share like thought and ideas and work together as a team uh, more than be just a single individual, each of us in their own little bubble. You know, I don't think, especially uh, for younger generation, I don't think this is, is going to work long term. So I think it's very important if, uh, if uh, you know, for, if we are to go back to the office, I think it's really um, important for, especially for young, uh, young talent, and especially people just maybe graduated university and they, you know, they are just joining, uh, starting a new job. I think it's very important for them to be in the office to, you know, to, um, let's say, suck the, com- the company culture and experience work the way it's meant to be. Because yeah. I don't think you're going to learn otherwise uh, to work and to be professional from your living room or from your, you know, mm-hmm. desk at home. So, yeah, there's so much that we, so much creativity and so much learning that just happens by watching sometimes and having someone next to you. I think it's going to be really interesting because I think a big reason why people want to continue working from home or they don't want to go into the office has nothing to do with what it's like at the office. It has to do with between the house and the home and the flexibility. Yeah. And, and yeah, so yeah. I, I think Europe will have a lot more opportunities to um, bring people back to the office sooner because there was already better work-life balance and better rules. But in the U.S. and probably also in, in London because of the big commute some people have, mm-hmm. I think there is going to be a shift of people having to choose, do I want this life or do I want this job or how do I blend them together? Because a lot of people have been making big sacrifices for work, Mm -hmm. but not thinking about how their whole life fits into it. Um, So I think it'll be really interesting to see how things shift in that capacity. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I hope that, um, you know, we we could learn from these experiences, like for company to be more flexible toward, you know, toward employees, because I think that's what we learned. I think we found out that, you know, obviously working from home, you know, is great because you, you know, you save all your commute and, you know, you've got so much free time on your hand. If you're like, oh my (laughs) God, like I, I can exercise in the morning and still be at nine in front of my desk. You know, even yeah. if I wake up at eight o'clock. Yeah. So, you know, that's obviously uh, great. But I just really hope that that's what I, I hope for companies to be more flexible and to let uh, people like um, have a better work-life balance, as you said, because I think that's 
very important. And that's what I think people don't want to have it taken away from them after, you know, a year and a half. It's not, it was like a quite a big chunk of time that mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, you think like, oh, you work from home, but it's, it's hard as well to work from home. It's not like, yeah. uh, you know, it's not easy. At least for me, it was very challenging because obviously I had like my my home, basically my spare room was a warehouse. Yes. <laughs> I had products, uh, swatches, uh, clothes, uh, uh, paper pattern. I had everything in that room and I had no space left. Them. Mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so and I had I didn't have space to even measure sample for example I had to do it in my you know on the top of the hall <laughs> because especially <laughs> in London you know the, long, the houses are not so big yeah so you know it was really like crazy it's like how so uh, how like your house environment adapted as well to you know to the to the change to the pandemic and what your uh, house became like uh, we, I had suddenly my spare room was my my warehouse and I had my uh, my living room was my gym. Yeah. <laughs> my bedroom stayed the bedroom the, the bedroom, but the the kitchen became my office. So every like uh, it was like all a shift of yeah. like um, uh, function in the house that we never had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's definitely been wild. So with things starting to shift and open up, like, what are you excited about for what's upcoming? What's, what are you looking forward to? Oh my God, to go back to, you know, to life in general, to go back to a normal life. I'm excited about, uh, in general, I'm excited about, um, you know, creating new products that are going to be exciting. Finally, people will wear them to go out mm-hmm. and not to stay home anymore. <laughs> Which is yeah. also like we doing sports where sometimes it's been like it's, it's been good because obviously kept the business going, but you know, it's like it's exciting when you know that people buy your stuff because they're gonna out for a party or they go out for mm-hmm. you know for having fun with friends or for a holiday. Yeah. So that's certainly like something that excites me. Excites me to make create products and you know, create a future of products that uh they are positive you know because obviously now we are in the phase of designing ss23 mm-hmm. and you know exciting that you know we are looking at a possibly a world with no pandemic involved yeah. anymore <laughs> so a brighter future and then generally i'm i'm just uh, excited about life and you know life to get him back to normal to travel again to go back to see my family because obviously mm-hmm. i haven't seen them for a year now yeah um so i i just Wanna be able to travel normally as it was to be. I think that's the thing that excites me the most. But in general, I think because we have been, our life has been stripped down so much, and the things that we always taken for granted, uh, like you know, going for dinner, going to the cinema, has been taken away from us. I feel now each of these things it makes you excite you. <laughs> <laughs> excites you like each like going to the cinema oh my god I'm going to the <laughs> cinema I've been to the cinema like two weeks ago for the first time after a year and a half and I was like so happy I felt like oh my god I was like so relaxed like the big screen you know like a so new experience mm-hmm. and so it's the same you know if you want to go for a dinner with friends you know you haven't I mean we have been shot for like basically until June so mm-hmm. it's been quite a, a while so yeah now everything like even the small that, that's quite sweet I think thinking that even you know small thing that you're always taking for granted then suddenly they become like your highlight of the week <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely we ask everybody on the podcast where they put themselves on the powerful lady scale zero being average everyday human and 10 being the most powerful lady imaginable where would you put yourself today and where would you put yourself on average? Um, maybe today, maybe I'm like a five, <laughs> a normal, powerful lady. Maybe on average, I would say like a seven. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, a seven, because uh, yeah, I'm quite a... A fighter. <laughs> I'm a fighter, powerful lady, I think. <laughs> yeah. O- always so. going after what's next, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what's next? Um, uh, I think, yeah, um, 
I'm not sure. I think I just want to, you know, um, improve myself in, you know, in my work. As I say, I want to improve about, the, um, you know, uh, the sustainability aspect of the, of the business, but mainly I would like to focus on, um, on mentoring uh, new, new talent. That's something I'm really, I really would like to do. And I hope uh, one day an opportunity will come. Uh, I really would like to, you know, um, start per perhaps teaching in a university or, you know, I'm doing this like obviously on a daily basis with my team, especially with the younger member of the team, hiring trainee so that I can train them and then they, you know, prepare them for the, you know, for the, for the, uh, for their work life. Uh, but I really would like to, you know, to be able to do this more in a, in a formal way. So perhaps to go teaching and share my, my career, my experience with young generation and hopefully help them in, you know, achieving their dream in life. Yeah, that's what I would like to do. I love that. Um, as we're wrapping up the podcast today, is there anything that you want to share with everybody listening, either a book you love or a you know, something you follow that inspires you or a quote that you like? Um, for me, the, my uh, favorite quotes, which um, uh, I always find it very, very powerful as well, is a quote from uh, uh, Charles Darwin, where he says that uh, it's not the strongest of the species that survives and not the most intelligent, but is the one that is the most adaptable to change. And this is, for me, I think is really what, uh, makes you uh, successful or happy in life. And I think uh, this past year of pandemic really showed us that because we, we really had to adapt ourselves so much to a complete different life and events that we never thought would happen. That I think for me is the, you know, is a very, very strong quote that uh, I, I really, you know, keep myself close to my heart. Yeah. I love that. Well, it has been such a pleasure to see your face and have this chat with you and to hang out. I'm so happy you were a yes to me and the Powerful Ladies. Oh, and I'm so happy too. It's yes. been so nice to, to see you again. And I hope we can, you know, keep in touch again and, you know, have another chance to chat and, you know, connect again. A absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. All the links to connect with Alessandra are in our show notes at thepowerfulladies.com forward slash podcast. There you also can leave comments and ask questions about the episode. Tell me what you think. Want more Powerful Ladies? Come join us on Instagram at Powerful Ladies, where you can also find some free downloads to start being powerful today. Subscribe to this podcast and help us connect with more listeners by leaving us a five-star rating and review. If you're looking to connect directly with me, please visit caraduffy.com. I'd like to thank our producer, composer, and audio engineer, Jordan Duffy. Without her, this wouldn't be possible. You can follow her on Instagram at Jordan K. Duffy. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, I hope we're taking on being powerful in your life. Go be awesome and up to something you love.